why Cryo's outdated. Has anyone else realized how weak Cryo is in modern day? Well, today I aim to tell you just how we got to this point, and also where Cryo's position in the meta currently lies. Let's get into it. Reactions are what make elements, elements. First things first, freeze. The poster child of the cryo element. While this was once a meta behemoth, certainly not anymore. It's a primarily AoE team that's great at clearing multi-wave content. Grouping is tight, efficient, and clean. Yet now we've got teams that deal AoE in spades for hardly any cost at all. Nilu Bloom is the most clear example. Stick a bunch of EM and HP percent on your team, then time for takeoff. As opposed to Cryo, where you have to reach ridiculous investment levels to try compete with top teams. You need very high quality gear and artifacts to come even mildly close to Bloom. At that point, what is the point? Sucking against boss scenarios also isn't a good look. It was excusable back in the 2.x era. Bosses have gained more and more HP as time has gone on. DPS checks are intense in Spiral Abyss nowadays. Most modern teams that excel in AoE still have considerable single target competency. Unlike Freeze. And then we have Melt. On its own, fine reaction. But it's so impractical in use. This is because of the pyro characters we have access to. This is what happens when you give little men big guns. Good luck, boys! Vaporizes Xingqiu and Yolan to take advantage of it, but Melt it barely has anything. You can use Gene Sunfire, but that needs two units to do one job. Whereas Vape and other teams only need one reaction enabler. Plus, that forces extreme circle impact. Not so great for AoE. There is simply no insane Melt support. Shenhe exists, yet she steals Melts. So, automatically not viable for this archetype. Burn Melt exists, and it's not a bad team, but Nikita has far more high value applications over this. You only play Burn Melt if you're trying to force Ganyu. Superconduct! Ugh, are you serious? <laughs> Physical is without a doubt the worst way to deal damage in this game. In a world all about reactions, you choose the most basic peasant method of DPS? Yule is far from a peasant with her elegance, and the Lawrence clan noblehood. Uh, being the worst limited 5 star in the game, not even only DPS, is kind of a peasant move though. Ferminet tried to save Superconduct as a reaction, but that had no meta impact whatsoever. Besides, Shatter supplements his kit doesn't solve the core issues of the reaction itself. He's not a good unit, clear and simple. Most units are also naturally more resistant to fizz damage. Ruin enemies, anyone? This naturally disadvantages an already weak damage type. It's no surprise that Hoyoverse haven't bothered making more physical units. Their game hates them. Ha, <laughs> you was still thick though. Dendro also did nothing for Cryo. Burn Melt, is it? If you really want to reach, sure, Fridge exists, but in my opinion, horrible team comp. Fridge is a meme team. Have you read the name? You don't actually play it for really good numbers. For example, think of Riesli Hyper Fridge. Did you know sticking Yao Yao on the end is actually stronger? Yeah, that's how bad Fridge is. Are there any perks to play in Cryo? You hardly get any benefit for choosing Cryo, in particular. Look at the resonance. This forms a key part of an element's identity. 15% crit rate. Jolly good, yes? No, not really. It only works in freeze teams, a comp where you aren't short on crit rate at all. You get a ton from Blizzard Strayer already. Why does this only work for freeze? Well, with Melt, the Cryo auras will instantly get eaten by Pyro, so no chance to take advantage of the buff. And with Superconduct, the Cryo Aura gets stolen by the Electro Application. No room for Cryo to thrive either, so no crit rate. Now, why is this important? Does a Resonance matter that much? Yep. Resonances can be considerable buffs to their element. Look at Hydro Res, for example. 25% extra juicy HP. Most HP scaling characters are Hydro, and those who aren't like to play in double Hydro. There's a very clear, deliberate design choice here. 
look at Kokomi Farina Mono Hydro. All three damage dealers enjoy the resonance. Or Hu Tao teams. This also makes reaching thresholds easier. For example, Tao doesn't want more than 40k HP, and she's best used as a double hydro driver, so you can rely on that resonance to clean up the last of your missing stats. Cryo Resonance wishes it was this good. Even weaker resonances like Pyro Res do good for their best in slot teams, like Midlini Mono Pyro and International. Blizzard Strayer is usually praised as a great perk of Cryo, the element where you don't have to build crit rate if you're playing Freeze. We already talked about why that's not too hot. Speaking of hot, melt teams can't even use it. Did you know you can use 4-piece Lava Walker in a reverse melt Rosaria team? Hope that helps someone out there, and hope that proves how Blizzard Strayer isn't all it's chalked up to be. Plus, against bosses, half of Blizzard's passive doesn't work anymore. The only good thing about this set now, Domain has a fun name. What does that mean? Anyways, it's very high investment for mediocre returns. Where's the perks in that? Hold it! If you're enjoying the video, why not consider liking and subscribing? Maybe even leave a cool comment down below. If you do, Ayaka's forehead will decrease by 50%! Cryo saved, yippee! Now for the individual breakdown of all cryo units and why they're all a bunch of frozen pizza! <clears throat> so, for starters, introduces some of the game's most useless characters. Chi-Chi, Aloy, Fremenet, and Eula. Huh? Tell me who uses these, because they're good. Nobody. Eula fans are so cultured, though. You realistically never use Diona and Layla. Zhongli and Baiju are way better in far more teams, and more effective in the game's current best teams. Plus, in cryo teams, they're both a DPS loss. You want Shenha in their place instead, and if not her, then Rosaria. Kokomi should be your freeze healer, and if you don't have Kokomi, why are you playing threes? Chongyun and Kayaka are characters of all time. They definitely exist, to their detriment, honestly. Kaya does nothing. That's it. Nothing. Freeze is so bad, he's not got a good free-to-play freeze option. You can reverse melt if you don't have anything else. Same story for Chongus over here. Rosaria's numbers are solid, especially in Melt. Hey, but that's the thing, she demands a Melt team built around her. Sure, she works in Freeze, but is a direct downgrade to Shenha? What about Mika and Charlotte? Wow, they exist as well! Now, they're both good Farina teammates, so that brings them solid meta value. But that's it, they aren't good because they're Cryo, they're good because Farina needs fanfare. Mika provides attack speed, which is a useless stat. He's not even Yule's best in slot support, and did not fix Yule's core issues. He fails as a niche support option. Charlotte only exists as a more accessible Farina healer, for those of you who don't own Baiju or Jean. What about sweet Ganyu? She can freeze Melt in his off-field presence. Sadly, the damage she deals isn't enough anymore. Modern units far perform her. As for her off-field burst playstyle, there's no practical place for it outside of Mono Cryo. Her burst does synergize very well with cute best girl Venti, thanks to both of them having quadratic scaling. But lovely Venti is able to work very well with more modern units too. Wanderer and Noivalette are great pairs, for instance. Morgana is also tied to AoE only. It will do nothing against a boss. It's equal to playing Ganyu solo. Meanwhile, other AoE heavy teams like Nilu Bloom are fine against bosses, especially with high investment. They're not in their prime, is all. Reesley, he seems good. After all, the man has splendid teams. Plays with both Farina and Shine Ling. Can't go wrong there, can you? Thing is, he's carried by his teammates. Ryo's good because Farina and Shine Ling are good. His own personal DPS isn't that high, C0. So while his team DPS may be high, Ryo himself doesn't even contribute 50% of team damage. And now for Cryo's crown jewel, Frostflake Heron Ayaka. Oh boy. She's the queen of freeze. Not a great reaction to rain over. So what saves Ayaka? She's still a very potent hyper carry and the best modern cryo unit. Personal DPS. Ayaka's good because her raw DPS output is good. There's no other special twist. She simply does damage. It's the same reason why Ito is decent. He's nowhere near Ayaka level, of course, but his teams don't offer much other than buffs to his own raw damage. There's one major issue with this. Ayaka needs a lot of investment, especially nowadays. Competing with top Dendro teams, 
very tall ask of Ayaka without a Mist Splitter on Kazuha. At least. Dendro teams can fall back on reactions. Artifacts and builds not that great? That's fine, since the reaction can help carry. While Haifam's a top performing DPS right now, Harbinger of Dawn is equal to Mist Splitter on him, theoretically assuming you can stay above the HP threshold. Ayaka has no such luxuries. Kakeuchi is far worse than Mist Splitter, no questions asked. And her teammates? Oh man. Invest bigger, go home. She's practically unplayable without Kokomi. Mona may be good on paper, but in practice she feels horrible to use. Shen has also a massive buff to Ayaka, but that's a niche support who works in a grand total of two teams. And in reality, when you consider how Melt doesn't work right now, and how Freeze is mid, Ayaka is the only unit she's realistically good with. You're pulling three five stars for one unit. Kokomi, Kazuha, and Shenha. Maple Man is a must. Ayaka needs a high level of grouping, otherwise that burst isn't landing. Let's settle this once and for all. Free to play Ayaka versus high investment Ayaka. You'll easily see the difference. Cryo is my favorite element, by the way. I have a C2R1 Shenha, top 1% C1R1 Ganyu, and 60k burst tick R1 Ayaka. But even I have to admit this element's fatal flaws. So there you go. Good hyper carry, but a very high barrier to entry, especially with what she provides. Cryo is no longer top of the meta. It hasn't been for a long time now. Those days are long, long gone. 2.7 to 2.8 officially killed it for most players. Quick Bloom, Dendro in general, and Farina teams now reign supreme. Freeze can't hope to compete at reasonable levels of investment. In its current state, Cryo is nearly unplayable. It would need a serious rework to be worth playing again. The best way to fix it? Make Melt work. Have a Pyro or Cryo unit dedicated to Melt specifically, a unit who can make the reaction synergize with common units. It's fine if Freeze gets forgotten. After all, burning is a trash Dendro reaction too. Save us from this meltless world, Arlecchino. Any future pyro or cryo unit, please. Until then, bricked element. Hopefully this video taught you where cryo lies in the modern meta today. This has been Juice, signing out. And I wish you all a nice, warm day with a mug of hot chalky.